the year in review 2021. This year has been a very busy one for me as I manage to make a video almost every day, which takes some doing. This is a short review of a small number of my own projects from 2021 and hopefully I will be making many more new videos in 2022. The first video in this review features my Lion locomotive. I really like this little engine. It's a 5 inch gauge Lion originally designed by LBSC. In this clip I've connected some compressed air to the boiler using this piece of silicone rubber pipe and the water gauge is leaking really badly where the nuts hold the glass in place. I can clearly hear the sound of the air leak and feel it blowing on my hand. The next bit is very important. Wearing a pair of safety glasses, I very carefully tighten the nuts, which in turn apply more pressure on the O-rings and seal the leak. In the next episode I'm going to steam test this locomotive because even though I've had it for several months, I've never run it on steam. The oiling of locomotives where all the motion and all the working parts are inside the frames is quite difficult. And that's especially true on this engine, there's no way I can get an oil can in at all, unless I tip it on its nose like this. Most miniature locomotive clubs have a section of track which can be used to drop the fire out of the firebox. And if I was at such a track I would probably oil the locomotive from underneath, but it's really much easier to do it like this. I rebuild model steam engines fairly frequently, if you watch my videos I do make one every day. So I often run them fast to make sure nothing drops off. And if something is going to drop off it's better doing it here at my workshop than when the customer gets it back. It doesn't apply with this engine as it belongs to me. The next episode in this series will feature the first live steam test of this engine since I bought it. As you can see it really does run very well indeed. There is a small amount of play in the crank axle, I've already pointed this out in a previous episode. I'll fix it in a later episode. Once the water clears from the piping the whistle works very well and is still only running on £30 per square inch. And what is more remarkable is the fact that the engine is running and pumping water into the boiler the gauge glass shows that the boiler is now full and the pressure isn't dropping. And believe me when I say this is definitely not normal. I'll speed up the engine and see if the pressure drops. No, the pressure is still not dropping, I'll blow down the water gauge. Blowing down the water gauge clears any bubbles in the glass so you can get a true reading of how much water is in the boiler. Now at last on the bench is a partly completed Stuart triple expansion engine. Looking at the engine on the bench, the first impressions are quite good. It would appear to be very well made. And it does look fairly complete. Most of the parts seem to be present. When I rotate the crankshaft, everything does what it's supposed to do, but everything is loose. In this series, I intend to finish this engine to a good standard. In my opinion, from what I can see here, most of the hard work seems to have been done. The water pump and air pump are not present. And yesterday I gave Stuart Models a call and ordered the parts. It's a set of castings to make an air pump, which would be used to evacuate the condenser, and a water pump to feed water into the boiler. The best way to clean up the flywheel is to mount it on a shaft in the lathe and spin it. It's a long way from the chuck, this is a health and safety thing. Now the flywheel is spinning, it's far easier to clean it. I'm just using wet or dry sandpaper, this is 400 grit. 
It's a credit to Edward from the USA for keeping this engine in such good condition over such a long period. Thank you Edward, it makes my job just a little bit easier. After the wet or dry sandpaper, I finish off the job with some Scotch Brite, and now it looks okay. One small point, a credit to the engineer who built this engine, just look how true this flywheel is running. You will notice that when I clean the inside edges, I never put my fingers all the way in there, I fold the sandpaper. That looks better already, the flywheel is now right up against the eccentrics, there's less chance of bending the crankshaft that way. To conclude this introductory episode, I've put some details about the engine on screen in text form. I would like to thank Edward for sending me these details. It's always good to know what I'm working on and where it came from. The smoke box design on the Stirling single is very different. It's a wrapper that goes round the smoke box and the cylinders. So by initially letting some steam into the cylinders, just like the boiler wrapper, the black paint on the smoke box is warming up but slowly. Once upon a time, in the early 1980s, I was at a local club that I was a member of, and one of the members was a retired solicitor who spent his retirement building locomotives. His engineering standard was exceptional, as was the quantity of locomotives that he used to make. The engine is now running under its own steam, and I need to keep the speed low. Anyway, one Sunday, the man arrived with a new engine, had just built it. It was a Gresley locomotive, which was an 080, I think. And it was painted the same colour as this one. It was a coal-fired locomotive, so he started it with some paraffin-soaked charcoal, and then put on the coal. And in no time at all, the entire engine got very hot. The smoke box started to blister. But worse than that, the entire boiler barrel started to blister like I've never seen in my life. It looked like something from a 50s science fiction film. All the paint was bubbling and popping and... I've never seen anything like it, really. It was a phenomenon. I wish I had a camera then. In this part of the clip, I'm not just waving to you. What I'm saying is do not touch the paint under any circumstances. If you touch the paint, you will mark it. If any bubbles do appear, don't do anything about that. Just leave them. I've just noticed that the oil pump is not pumping any oil. So here I'm going to remove the cap and have a look what's going on. Oh, I can see what it is. The little pump isn't going round, the ratchet wheel's stuck. This is probably because the engine's been on a shelf for quite a long time. Luckily, an application of lubricating oil fixed the problem. So what was the problem with this engine up at the club track? Myself and a few of the members were discussing it, and the builder said that he'd used a sheet of galvanised steel for the boiler wrapper and he thought it might have been the etching primer that he used reacting with the galvanised boiler wrapper. That's why I was a bit worried with this engine because it also has a galvanised boiler wrapper but thankfully it was okay. Finally the gas ran out but the good news is I bought these on Amazon the other day, six cans of gas and they arrived this morning. I'll be doing some more paint baking in another episode. Time, I think, for a very close look at the boiler wrapper to see what's happening. It still needs a little bit more rubbing down as far as I can see, but there are no bubbles at all. Apart from bubbles, the paint can contract and you get big gaps. But no, it seems OK. The smoke box is fine, and when I go back the other way, I cannot detect any problems. There's the odd oil spot that came out of the chimney. I thought I'd put one side of the running boards and splasher in place. You can get the idea what this is going to look like when it's finished. There's quite a bit of painting to do yet, but painting these side panels shouldn't be a problem. This is a view from the cab with the fire hall door open, and when I close the door, I can actually touch it. Before, it was far too hot. Here's the gas tank arrangement. Notice that one of the gas tanks is in a plastic tub. I'll put some water in here, which stops it chilling and keeps the pressure up. Before continuing, I turned off the gas supply to kill the burner, because I need to check the check valve at the right hand side. I think it's blocked. Here is something worth mentioning. It doesn't really apply when you're running the locomotive on a track, because with this amount of steam pressure, which is very low, the engine wouldn't even run. But sat on a test bed, you can run the engine at a very low pressure, but it's not a good idea, because quite a lot of very wet steam is rushing into the cylinders 
and now everything in the vicinity of the engine is covered in a mixture of steam oil and water which I need to clean off before I can use my workbench again. It is a bit of a transformation, have a look at these earlier photographs. The original old boiler was very leaky and had been removed. This was a brand new boiler bought from the steam workshop. When you take on jobs like this you have to be aware just how much work you will need to do. And don't forget in this series I've not been building the engine, I've just been rebuilding it, I didn't have to make too many parts. I think it was probably worth it just for the video. I'm sure a lot of people who have been watching this series are a lot wiser as to how to rebuild, refinish or maybe build from scratch a model steam locomotive. Yes it could have been better but nothing's perfect, it certainly looks a lot better than it does in the previous photographs. This Simplex series took some making, it ran to 105 episodes and the original plan was once it was finished I was going to run it at the York Model Engineering Society but unfortunately the Covid pandemic made that not a wise thing to do. The problem was at the time I couldn't just keep the engine on the workbench, I need the space and I'm fast running out of space. My friend uses it as a display item in his lounge and is very happy with it. All of these videos feature engines that I've been working on that actually belong to me and sometimes depending on how busy I am I have to put these kind of projects on pause because working on jobs for my customers has to take priority. To conclude this video all I have to say now is a very happy healthy new year. Stay well in 2022, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Once I've finished this voiceover and the editing and uploading of this video I'll be going into the workshop to make tomorrow's video for the 1st of January 2022. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.